be dealt with, major crimes in Dallas County will be reduced by one half. My preacher, Dr. Watterson at Cliff Temple Baptist Church, oftentimes when he's trying to make a point will say, are you listening? I'm going to plagiarize Dr. Fear of potential terrorist activities caused the Braniff jetliner to dock in the air cargo area at Love Field. There was tight security as the 106 members of the Israeli Philharmonic Orchestra deplaned. They went in chartered buses to their hotels in downtown, while the committee of three and the managers of the orchestra met with City Secretary Harold Shank. He presented them with an honorary citizenship paper. From there, it was to a news conference, and I talked with the conductor of the Israeli Philharmonic, Maestro Zubin Mehta. We've enjoyed visiting with you and the city of Arlington this morning, and we've been looking forward to seeing you and Mrs. Smith in Arlington. Now, over and out. Mr. McBride said this is not any time for real serious business for the Chamber of Commerce, but he said if he had his way, he had held all of his meetings at 747 Braniff Place. Jim Green, Channel 8 News, on the move, somewhere over Texas.
see how the contract 15,000 acres of land in the, in the northern portion of this two counties to your particular gate. If you should ever have some free time and decide to take a stroll from one end of the terminal to the other, be prepared for a hike, for it is 3,000 feet long. Traffic controllers will operate, and immediately below that is the navigational air system heading the International Parkway. Traffickers have progressed with the paving of the crosswind rum runways. We're using the largest paper. I will continue to insist that uh, the North Vietnamese be brought to the court of world opinion as far as their failure to live by the Geneva Conventions. Uh, they are a signatory to the conventions. Uh, they have refused to abide by those conventions. And I think it's incumbent upon all of us here in the United States, and I was pleased with the action of the Senate yesterday in insisting uh, that we continue to call them to account for their failure to abide by the Geneva Convention. Professional criminals are making their living off of Dallas citizens because of legal loopholes and lenient courts. At least that's the charge made here today by Police Chief Frank Dyson. He's calling on the state legislature to adopt a six-point plan that he says will get the repeat offenders off the streets and into the jail without bond. If the repeat offender is effectively dealt with, major crimes in Dallas County will be reduced by one half. When will responsible officials adopt more realistic attitudes in dealing with the unreformed, unrehabilitated, repeating criminal offender? It will happen when you and other responsible citizens of our state demand it. We need to do it now. Dyson wants the courts to stop dealing out concurrent prison sentences. He's demanding more courts, speedier trials, and denial of bond to persons arrested for one felony while out on bond for committing another felony. It's demoralizing and discouraging, he says, to catch a criminal only to have him commit another crime when he gets out of jail on bond. Martha McIntyre, Channel 8 News on the Move. Right next to the security button. <laughs> 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 Maestro, you have come to Dallas under uh, circumstances of top security because of uh, the terrorism that has been going on. Have any members of your orchestra expressed any fear for their lives on this tour? Not really. You must understand that. Our orchestra is made out of 106 musicians, simultaneously 106 soldiers. Have these events, uh, in fact, made your orchestra members feel like soldiers, as you say? Well, they have the spirit of the soldier, like every Israeli has. There is no difference in that way between an Israeli businessman or a musician or a carpenter. It's, it's the same thing. about 60 feet from the lumber yard, phoned in the first alarm about 11.30 last night. As each firefighting company arrived, they called for more help until less than half an hour later, the fire was at four alarm status with 11 pump trucks, four ladder trucks, and 125 firemen, about half of whom had to be called in from off duty. They came to the 1800 block of Park Road in the hospital district on Fort Worth's near south side. What started the fire is not known but two forklifts, five flatbed trucks, and six buildings, including one mostly of brick and one the size of a football field, were destroyed. H.B. Stuck, president of the Quarles Lumber Company, says he doesn't know yet what caused the fire, and he's not sure exactly how much damage it caused, but he says it could run to $500,000.
Jerry Taff, Channel 8 News on the Move on the south side in Fort Worth. We have a fine group. We have two seniors with us. We have Randy Braband and Tommy Lee, and we have Sherman Lee playing. He's a sophomore, but he's doing a good job. And then uh, I hope I stay in there a while. Is there a spree de corps among the linebackers that uh, other divisions do not have, or does yours equal that among the other divisions of the team? Well, we uh, our linebackers are going to be our, I guess, our major factor in our defense because we are, you know, we have more experience at that than we have at other positions. No, it's better, I guess. So. Do you have a, what sort of assignments do you have on different types of plays? Well, all the assignments are just reading your blocks and following the ball carrier. That's making the tackle, that's it. <laughs> Well, uh, we're going to throw the ball a lot more, I think, this year than we have in the past. Uh, of course, Coach Wilson probably knows as much uh, about passing offense as anybody I've ever been associated with, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I think we're going to have a good passing offense. Think your record will be improved over last year? Definitely. Definitely. We're really excited about our chances this year. Of course, uh, this answer is often unanswered, but is there any club you'd rather beat? Than uh, I'd have to say the else. Horns. I I'd love to beat Texas. That's all there is to it. Now, you catch them early this year, don't you? Yes, as you sir. always do. Uh -huh. Where will the game be played It'll this be year? It'll be here in, in Lubbock. How about that bell? Does that bother you any when it goes throughout the game? I know they say it bothers the opposing coaches since it's right behind their yeah, bench. Oh, I like that. that. That gives us a, a little fire. I just try and get people enthusiastic like, with skiing like I do. You know, it's, to get them all hyped up to, to come do it. And, and so when I come to the show, I go through a, a series of exercises that I do myself, which on a smaller scale can be applied to people in Dallas. Well, so when they come up, then it, it's not gonna bother them. They aren't gonna be in so much trouble when they start skiing. We do some stretching exercises. They're not muscle building type of things, but things that will keep them from being sore after a day of skiing or two. And so that makes it more enjoyable for their vacation. Plus, uh, I try to get them thinking about things that, that help me when I'm not skiing so that so that when they come to Colorado or come to any area for that matter, then when they, when they get ready to go skiing, I'm going to try and make it easier for them so that it's much more enjoyable. Plus the time that they spend there, they're going to be doing the things they want to do instead of being hassled in things that are inconvenience and other problems. Do you find that, that uh, these ski shows attract primarily novice people who've never skied before, or do you get the, the, the medium type and expert people coming out? Well, I think you get a, a pretty good cross-section, actually. It's a, it's a good opportunity for the novice people to go out without being exposed. In other words, they're not, they're not put on a, on a spot on a hill. Right, I so. know about that. <laughs> Anyone reading that article, the normal person with using average uh, logic would come to the conclusion after reading that article by Alan Stang that Arthur Bremer was about as much of a loner as Lee Harvey Oswald, and I've only met two people in the last year that believe that Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone. In your hand, you have documented proof, certified and on record at the Federal Records Center in Fort Worth, that Mr. Milford did indeed file for bankruptcy in his own name, under his own motivation, asking the courts to grant him bankruptcy, both in his personal affairs and his business affairs. Well, what does this have to do with you quitting the race? Well, Mr. Milford has charged that I'm a liar. He's, he's uh, stated that, that I'm slandering him maliciously. And what I am presenting to Mr. Milford here is an offer. 
that if he will prove that any of the charges he has made against me We, with a complete agreement of the officials of Lena Pope Home, are making a recommendation to our executive committee that a highly respected and authoritative organization in the field of child welfare, the Child Welfare League of America, be requested to appoint a team of experts to carry out a complete and thorough study and evaluation of the home services. Visitors to the State Fair of Texas will have a new attraction to enjoy this year. Across the street will be Old Higgs, the Dallas Firefighters Museum. It's housed in a portion of a fire station built in 1908, back in the days when horses pulled the fire wagons and a Dalmatian dog was the volunteer fireman's best friend. Actual pieces of firefighting equipment, photographs, and antique furniture decorate the two floors of the building, all put together by off-duty firefighters and members of the community. But the real star attraction is Old Tig itself. It's a horse-drawn steam engine pumper built in 1884. Old Tig got its name from Civil War General W.L. Cabell, who later became a mayor of Dallas, as did his son and grandson. The Firefighters Museum is complete even unto its shiny brass pole. Unfortunately, in the interest of safety of over-enthusiastic amateurs, sliding down it is not permitted. For Channel 8 News in the Move, this is Judy Hanna. Arlington Chamber President Marvin McBride spent most of the flight on the telephone speaking with Governor Preston Smith and Chamber representatives in Houston, San Antonio, and Waco as we passed over each city. All were invited to visit what Arlington calls the greatest amusement center in the Southwest. 350 persons attended the fellowship meeting aboard a Braniff 747, most of whom paid $35 for the privilege. McBride said the chamber did not make any money, only enough to pay the $7,000 tab for the flight. Everyone was served Eggs Benedict and champagne, even Bob Gooding. National coverage of the unique meeting is expected through members of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce who were aboard and Braniff's publications. The high-in-the-sky promotion should result in thousands of extra dollars for the Arlington Mid-Cities area tourist complex. The total value of the opening phase is about $700 million. The facts and figures on the Mammoth Regional Airport sound different when you're there inside the fence looking at the airport itself. The entire tour from a sightseeing bus covers about 12 miles around the edge of the airport and takes viewers close enough to identify the shape and size of such things as the Braniff semicircular terminal building, the one that's nearest completion. Overlooking the entire airport, of course, is the steeple-like control tower, which sits almost in the dead center of the area. Guides say the airport should be finished about July 15th of next year and will be occupied and in service before the end of October. Tours similar to this one will be run Sundays, three times every Sunday, starting this Sunday, so you can come out aboard one of these buses and be driven around the airport and see it for yourself. Phil Reynolds, Channel 8 News on the Move at the Dallas-Fort Worth Regional Airport.